Alrighty, so I've been using the new Escanor on the bird specifically. I, I think you could probably get away with using him on the deer. I have no doubt in my mind that you could beat the deer with him. Pretty much no problem, I would think, as long as you have like a solid foundation on your, you know, red, blue, green units. Um, but because he's light and he doesn't help with the color rotation, it's kind of hard to get, like, it's kind of hard to push him into the deer team, like, unless you're just kind of making a YouTube video on it. Uh, I do actually use Melee for my deer team, but it's just because I'm so used to it at this point. I don't know. I might end up messing around with him on the deer, but not really sure if I will or not. Uh, but I have been using him very consistently on the birds, so we're going to hop in, uh, I guess just in case you need it, here is all the gear info. Pretty much every single person is on attack crit with uh, a lot of HP defense sort of substats uh, or sub subunits, associated units or whatever. Um, well, it's kind of half and half, but either way, we are using the bird card set. Uh, let's hop into this thing, because honestly, it's gotten really quick. Like, I mean, I, you, I mean, if you have a decent run you're not getting absolutely screwed with rng and everything you can beat this pretty quickly so i do uh i do think that the new escanor is really good for the deer or the bird uh, especially for floor two phase two you used to have to have either cusack or the one escanor or frayer and you would have to rush an ultimate so that way you can actually take down that last like little like bit of health that he sort of regens um in one turn so that way you can bypass the sort of uh taunt mechanic there which i think a lot of people nowadays are really wanting to get away from using taunt units just because uh, unfortunately well it's it's kind of like a give and take i guess with the bird you can actually use uh tarmiel grace to disable him all the way up until floor three uh, it might be some somewhere in floor two that it stops working. I'm not positive on that, but I know that uh, I still get comments every once in a while from people on phase two, floor two, and they're like, "Hey, you know, I'm using Deanne or whoever to taunt, and uh, it just it still kills me." And it's because they're using Red Tarmia Link, and it's disabling the skill effect that prevents you from taking damage. So that can definitely be a little weird. Um, I think a lot of people are still uh, either just missing that. Actually, let me... I've got this team pretty down pat at this point. I think uh, at some point when I inevitably power Miguelda up to 100, I'm not going to be able to do this right here, which is use this skill and still have a little bit of HP left. I think she'll end up killing at that point. Um, but I like to be able to get off two attacks as much as possible during the turn so that way I can start building the melee stacks if possible but um, honestly this team is just so fast like it really is like incredibly quick uh, let's go ahead and get rid of I, I probably don't even need to use the level 2 card there but we're going to use it just in case but we should be able to kill here because there's no damage cap on floor 2 yet or on phase 2 yet yeah I, I could have used the level 1 for sure I wasn't expecting Cusack to do that much damage, but um, Cusack's honestly been really nice to use on this as well. But altogether, just <laughs> it's like the ultimate, like just pure damage build, and it's <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, it's really satisfying to use, I guess. Uh, I did not get any Miguelda cards, which is unfortunate. So let me stall for a turn, if possible, um, and then hopefully we get a Miguelda card here because having her ultimate is really good in f uh, phase four just because the power strike ultimate from her and cusack together um, are guaranteed like damage caps and then uh, depending on the stacks that i have okay thank god uh depending on the stacks that i have with Megelda, um i might be able to get a damage cap with escanor which mine's only three six so it's nothing crazy but i mean he still hits really hard of course uh and then if if i get my ultimate with melee his ultimate doesn't normally do damage cap. I won't be able to get it with melee, though. So let's go for this into this. I think we'll waste that and then try to push this to the front uh, just in case we somehow get a merge. If we get a high enough level melee card or high enough level Escanor card, those cards actually do still do damage um, in this last phase, which is really nice. I think ideally you just don't want to use any ultimates on floor one all the way up until the end, so that way you have all of your heaviest hitting cards. Well, we actually ended up getting a full merge there. So let's go for um, the single target with these characters, and then I don't know if that melee card's gonna guarantee the kill or not, but we shall see. So this goes off, 
I think we'll be pretty close. Mm, that didn't do nearly enough damage, I don't think. Unless he gets two crits. Okay, he does get two crits. Even if he would have left it with a little bit of HP, the Abyss from uh, Cusack would have killed there. So, moving into floor two. Give me just a moment. Alrighty, so here we are on floor two. I think... You know, like I was saying, if you have the one Escanor, you have Freyr, you have Cusack, you can rush an ultimate on this stage and kind of just, I don't know, not have to take it as fast. But because we have Escanor, we can basically just, I, I basically use this exact same hand every single turn one because uh, it gets me a stack of Melee's passive and we can get rid of some of the cards that I don't necessarily like to use as much because they're the weaker cards. Like this, the, the damage or like ultimate deplete cards, not the greatest. Escanor's, um... AoE card is not the greatest. He doesn't normally get targeted all that much either. So it's pretty, I guess, like, pretty seldom that I have him at low HP and can actually get use out of his uh, out of his AoE card. Uh, he actually goes for melee quite a bit. So I, I don't know if I need to swap the Tarmiel Grace over. But because Miguel does a little bit lower health normally, or lower, uh, whatchamacallit, lower... Uh, level <laughs> that's the word i'm looking for uh i i normally try to keep it on uh, her so let's go with this i think i think we can get away with killing this turn if this maxes okay it didn't quite max q sack but i think we'll be good either way this that one should lifesteal enough for a magelda stack i think no it was the second one that did oh well we still did enough damage no problem there and then just just having the escanor single target card in hand is all we need to be able to push phase two here so it's actually really nice. We basically just go for, um, let's go for, let's just use both of these. That might, that's actually a little bit of overkill in of itself. And then we can go with something like the AOE and then the single target card last. Because the, the little extra, extra damage that it's going to do will be more than enough. So we just need to make sure that this card right here does 10% or more. So that way we don't hit the damage cap. Um, and then boom. This one does damage camp, and then the little bit extra actually kills the, the phase, which is super, super nice. Like, not having to worry about rushing an ultimate in turn one is just just great in of itself. Um, I don't know if I have the damage here. to. I'm going to try to go for it. I might regret it, but we're going to go for the uh, the turn one kill here. Phase 3 is a little bit iffy. Sometimes if you pull bad cards, you might need to skip a little bit. But because we're using two Escanor cards, I think we're going to be able to bypass a little bit more of the damage cap and be able to get through this pretty easily. Oh, I I even... <laughs> I'm underestimating myself. I even wasted the, uh, the melee Amplify card there, which is a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. So... Now, uh, we have a lot more QSAT cards than I would really like, but... We'll just use as much of this stuff as we can. If that doesn't kill, we do have extra healing cards in hand, so we can try to heal up to full before uh, we push into the next phase. So pretty consistently hitting damage cap here. And then, yeah, well, that's good to go. Easy peasy. Moving into the last one. Alrighty, so here we are on floor three. Obviously, this is the hardest floor by by uh by any means um so we're just gonna go with the same turn one setup obviously in the first phase here if you can use level twos it's very beneficial they do so much more damage than the level ones in this phase i would highly recommend <laughs> having uh Miguel's holy relic for this part obviously you have to beat the bird quite a few times to be able to build a holy relic so if you don't have it completely understandable but um yeah, definitely a high priority as far as I'm concerned. He's going to disable, he's going to put the blockade here. Um, if he has, I'm pretty sure one of his passives will actually make it to where uh, he puts like a, an attack defense lower on. Luckily, we don't have that one, so we're actually going to be able to remove the blockade here. Uh, but it actually doesn't benefit us at all, really, because we don't have anything that we can merge into a level 2. So that is kind of just a little bit of... Uh, just bad RNG luck for us, but uh, it is what it is. So let's just do something like this for the moment. I'm not normally too worried about this phase. Um, I do like to try to attack with melee, um, I guess just at least pretty consistently on this one, just so that way he's life stealing a little bit more and not dying. But you know, once you build up enough of the uh, 
the damage reduction stacks it's not normally as bad this move always hurts like i don't know what it is this aoe move i think it's a ruin skill but even then i don't have any um whatchamacallit i don't have any like debuffs on at the moment because i've cleansed them off so it, it still does really good damage uh obviously we're gonna have to attack with melee here let's go for Let's go for this. That level 2 card should still do pretty decent. It's not going to do as well because we're using Miguelda's level 2, and she's obviously the weakest link on the team at the moment, but insanely good support, so she's definitely necessary. Um, uh, I don't, even if this deals max damage, which it does. Uh, oh, it, I don't know if that dealt max damage or not. I don't think the second hit uh, was a crit, but we might have been able to kill there. All right. Um, okay, so we have the blockade on us again. The ultimate kind of sucks. We don't have a healing card, but it is what it is. I don't think we're taking nearly as much damage here. We have three stacks on now. That is also kind of troublesome, so let's go ahead and push in to the next phase, if possible. Um, let me merge those Escanor cards, since they're going to merge anyway. And then we'll just do something like this. That's more than enough to kill. And then we'll see how the next phase goes. So pushing in. I don't think phase two is really all that big of an issue. I think the only thing you have to worry about with phase two is he puts on like dissolve. So having ultimates is obviously a lot nicer um, going into the, the third phase because that's where he starts to disable all of your stuff. But it's normally not too big of an issue, I don't think. So let's use this, this. Um, I don't really want to use my ultimates if possible. Honestly, I think we just use this so that way I keep my ultimates. Uh, I kind of wanted to get rid of that Miguelda card. I don't I don't know if we're going to kill here or not, depending on if these hit damage caps, which I think they are, and then the little bit of extra. Yeah, I think we'll be fine here. Sorry if you end up hearing the dog in the background. A uh, little bit of a waste on the melee card, but I didn't have anything else that I could have used. And then pushing into phase three, we have everybody's ultimate. Normally, even though it's nice to go into the last phase with ultimates, um, I personally like to get through this one pretty quickly. But with this team, uh, I think he disables like stance cards and stuff like that first. So it's not like the biggest deal in the world if you don't get through this one quick. Uh, with this team specifically, at least. So let's try to keep Melly's ultimate just in case for the last phase because he will put on like an evasion stack buff. Uh, if we wait too long, so it would be nice to get through that if possible. We'll go ahead and use Escanor's ultimate. Uh, we might as well, might as well do it ultimate first, so that way we get a little bit more ultimate move gauge, and then we'll throw away the Miguelda card. Feel a lot more comfortable with this. So, boom. We actually didn't hit damage cap with Husank uh, there, but I'm pretty sure this kills actually. And even if it, even if this didn't kill, we have the Abyss on. I'm pretty sure we would have done enough damage. Um, to get through it. Okay, I actually got the really good passive. So this is the only passive that he can get on this last phase where he doesn't revive, which is very, very nice, of course. So we're just going to throw um, all of these damaging cards out. I'm going to keep Melly's ultimate just in case because you can see the, uh, the AoE for Escanor just really does end up kind of falling short in a lot of scenarios because he's, just, he's not taking the damage that he needs for it to actually do... Uh, good stuff, but uh, we probably could have killed that phase if we would have used the ultimate instead of the AoE card, but not a really big deal. Um, I guess if we would have gotten one of the, you know, revive passives, we probably would have played those cards in a different order, or probably just left out the AoE in general. Uh, he does actually attack Escanor quite a bit in this last phase. We might be able to see a little bit of, uh, of damage from Escanor's AoE here. Don't know for sure. Yeah, still not really that great. I don't know. We, I mean, he has a couple of defense stacks on, but it's still just kind of kind of lacking a bit. But honestly, this took about a, a 15 and a half minutes, and that's with load times and stuff like that. It took about five minutes per floor. Uh, and honestly, that's pretty good. Beating the whole bird, like floor one to three in 15 minutes, is not bad in the slightest. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been farming the bird a little bit. I think I'll have a video out sometime this week on preparation for the next... 
uh, f holy relics that are coming out because we're sh we should be getting one for Nana Sheet and Thonar. And I, you know, we do get the cubes for humans and unknowns, which are both of their races. So I don't know if they're going to be bird relics. I'm assuming they're probably going to end up using a couple of materials from the dogs, which is going to be unfortunate. But uh, I'd like to have the bird materials just in case anyway. Plus, I'm missing some holy relics uh, as is. So uh, quite a few of them, actually. So I'm missing 10. So it'd be nice to have these materials just in case I want to build those. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.